Welcome back to Brave Business Conversations. We have in the studio Alice Bowden. Hey, Alice. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. I love the concept of microgreens, but not all of our listeners understand what microgreens are. Alice is the founder of Teeny Greeny. I always want to say Teeny Weeny. I have that a lot, actually. Yeah, I yeah. I think there must have been something in the past, Teeny Weeny. I'm yeah, not, well, not it's, a sure. great, it's a great take on Teeny Greeny, and I'll go find the yellow bikini song yeah. after this. <laughs> But um, tell us a bit about how you got into your business and what you want to achieve from it. Yeah, so going back quite a few years now, I originally had um, an organic fruit and veg business and I would sell via markets, had a sort of box scheme locally and I worked with really small market gardeners of organic and biodynamic growers and it was getting the produce from them to customers and then sort of educating the customers where their food came from, um, who was growing their food, giving the sort of link between that. And then I met Lee, who was the original sort of founder behind Teeny Greeny as an urban farm, and he stopped doing this and I took it on. And then I converted my own garage actually and had um, an urban farm set up in Holt um, near Trowbridge. And then from there, I've created these kits now just to inspire other people to be able to grow their own and sharing my own passions and experience on growing all year round. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Because I've learned a lot from you through just our brief conversation before the show. Uh, a couple of points that I'd like you to address sometime during the show is where food comes from. Yeah. Uh, I used to get very frustrated because I, I came from an equatorial country. So you always get everything when you want it. And you get very frustrated when things are not on the shelves, uh, not because of pandemic, but because of seasons. Yeah. And so why aren't this thing on the shelf? But actually, if you think about it, when you are eating food that is off season and it's readily available in the mm -hmm. shelves, it's gotten, it, it's got ex imported from some foreign country. It's probably got lots of carbon footprint uh, associated with it. It's probably not fresh, or it's probably been in the um, warehouse for months. And, of course, the nutritional value goes down. So where food comes from, I think, is an important topic, then, and that's definitely your passion. I'd like to talk to you yeah. more about that. <laughs> Secondly, it's nutritional value. Apparently, when you eat, why microgreens are not greens? When you eat things that are tiny or teeny, mm -hmm. it's actually 40% more nutritious. Yeah. Did not know that. No. Okay. <laughs> and then probably third, if we have time, I'd like to talk to you also about how to grow these things in your home. Yeah. I'm infamous yeah. for killing plants, <laughs> you know, uh, because I love them too much. Yeah. I water them too much and, um, and, and they die. So, um, yeah, we'll be back with more um, Teeny Greedy and Alice Bowden after this. And we're back with Brave Business Conversations with Alice Bowden from Teeny Greeny Microgreens. Eat your microgreens because it's better for you. So tell us about, educate us about where food comes from. Um, yeah, talk to us about that. I think that's really interesting. Well, obviously, growing in this country, there's obviously various seasons, and obviously we do grow a lot of different foods um, throughout seasons, but it's not readily available all year round, just with the climate as it is. Um, I think people expect things to be on the shelves in the supermarkets because we import a lot of food. Um, and then they don't sort of look at seasonal diet and actually how that impacts our health as well. We should be having such a varied diet through the year and because we l like what we like and sort of habitual, you know, we get the same things all the time. We're not seeing what's around us or where it's coming from because it's just there. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, I mean, when, when you want to create a more seasonal diet, what do you need to understand about food and seasons and how to get them because in a normal um you know supermarket and I won't mention brands yeah. or anything it is all readily available yes. isn't it yeah you know? I mean just if you are in the supermarkets you can actually look at the packaging and it'll tell you where it's grown oh, so you'll right. see where things have come from and mm -hmm. obviously we there's certain things we cannot grow um you know certain fruits and things um so they do have to be imported and again it's not a bad thing to have all, you know, to be able to have these foods readily available to us. Um, it works for both us importing and to the other countries we're buying from them. So that's good. But I think 
the more local we can get, it obviously is good for carbon footprint. Um, just a bit of education of knowing what we should eat at different times of the year and to include lots of different variation in our diet. Why is that important? Because as long as we've got our Bs and our A, uh, vitamin A's and B's and C's, why does it matter that we're, we're, we're consuming something that is a seasonal vegetable versus just a vegetable that's exported? So imported? by having it obviously getting local food, um, it's going to be fresher because obviously when they're picking it and the time travels supermarket to you, it's going to be better for you. The nutrition value is better than something that's picked and then stored for months at a time, which is often the case with certain foods. Um, I think, again, a variation of diet. Obviously, you're going to get different nutri nutrients and vitamins and minerals in different plants and different fruits and different vegetables throughout the year. So then you're going to get a mixture of all those. Um, and as they say, you're sort of, I think now they're saying it's, 10 a day or 11 a day as opposed to your 5 a day. So oh, darn it. I'm yeah, behind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's chocolate yeah. part of those 10 I a day. <laughs> the, no. C, the C vitamin chocolate. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got children of your own. I have, yes. Yeah. Have you seen that, uh, you know, by doing this business, uh, do they, you're obviously providing a more nutritional Yeah, diet I mean, we've always them. eaten quite well, and they've obviously grown up with me in this sort of industry um they like to be down when i was down going down to the farm seeing the growers they like being down there and watching it grow this again they take quite a lot of interest in because it's so quick growing so they get see the results quite quickly um my my youngest loves the pea shoots um because you can just pick them and nibble on them so i can put them into packed lunches and things um so yeah they do and again you can put them into smoothies and things so you know they're pretty good but as with all children, I think they can be sort of picky eaters. and We used to hide the vegetables, yeah, just exactly. blend them and all into soups. And you can with soups. these. Yeah. Again, you could just chuck them in so anything. You're, you know, listeners are not in the studio. You're, they're not seeing this beautiful uh, mini kits that you've brought. Um, so tell us more about the mini kit, if you can, just in an, uh, you know, in, in describe them to us. What are they? What are they used for? Yeah, so I've got a range of, I've got one, two, three, I've got about five different products. Um, our main biggest sort of seller is our Trilogy kit, which you get six bamboo trays. So they're totally reusable. And then you get a variety of three different seeds with that. And you get Koya disc compost. So it's peat free. Um, ours is obviously certified organic. And then you get all the instructions, really clear instructions, and all the nutritional breakdown of each of those seeds that come with it. Um, so really simple to get, get growing. And they're designed that you plant three each week over, over a month, so you're consistently growing, so you're not having to plant, harvest, and start again. Um, I've also got some kits designed with sort of children in mind. They've got educational resources in, our own teeny Trump playing cards with all the vitamins, minerals, breakdown, and coloring mandala and word searches. And then just before Christmas, we launched some two tin kits, which are a micrology and a micrology extra large, which you actually grow in the tin. So all of these you can grow on a windowsill or you can grow on a shelf as long as you've got some natural light and they all grow seven to ten days and it comes inclusive with everything and I've also made tutorial videos so people can get more help there if they're struggling. This is just like, it's perfect for me because you know I'll be the one yeah. clicking on the YouTube videos. I'm struggling. Well, I was. I always said I was a previous plant killer. Um, but I killed cactuses. Yeah. I mean, that, that, <laughs> that takes some that doing. That takes that skill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. We'll be back with more uh, nutritional value of food and how do you get the best nutrition out of food by eating your microgreens after this. Across Bath, Chippenham and Melksham, this is Radio Bath. We're back with Brave Business Conversations and Alice Bowden from Teeny Greeny Microgreens. Eat your microgreens. Why do we need to eat microgreens and not just greens? Well, I mean, eating greens is good, but microgreens grow really, really quickly. Um, more nutritional value in them, eating when they're smaller because the nutrition is in the seeds. So obviously seven to ten days, really quick growing as opposed to waiting again. And it's just fresh because you can grow it indoors any time of the year. 
So if you don't like vegetables, yeah. you don't want to eat lots of them, yeah. if you eat microgreens, you actually have less on your plate yeah. and it's 40% more nutritious. Yes, and you can put them in anything. So you can make a smoothie and just put them in there. Yeah, yeah. You know, as soups, things, so it's not as if you're eating a plate of broccoli. You're just putting them in the smoothie. That's incredible. That is absolutely... And do the kids like... Uh, uh, what's your experience? Because you've got three yeah, kids. You know? Yeah, so um, I said my youngest is probably the best at eating them. Um, and she'll eat a sort of... You sort of make a smoothie again with, you know, banana. Um, you can put milk or coconut milk or anything like that in with it. Um, peanut butter, um, sort of a filling. And then chuck some greens in with it and just with it in the blender. So yeah, it's easy. And it's probably more fun for kids because they see it growing. Yeah. Uh, and as you said, your youngest likes to pick off uh, and just chew it and everything like that. Yeah. So it's, it's, it becomes an eating experience, not just here, yeah. plate of boiled exactly. greens, eat. <laughs> yeah, I think the more you put time put into you know, nurturing something and watching it grow more likely you are to eat it or want to know what to do with it. And I think, again, even if you've, you know, Friday night pizza, just chuck some greens on the top of it. Yeah, exactly. You know, oh, I love my rocket it? pizza. Yeah, exactly. That's one of my favorite. Yeah. What are some of the challenges people have growing greens at home? And how does your microgreen uh, kit help? I think people lack confidence that they haven't got the space, possibly. They think they have to have a garden when you don't. Um, knowing how much to water you know just what things should look like that's a big one and again that's why i've sort of created the tutorials and we send out lots of helpful tips to make sure people do have that success that's what's really really important again creating the small kits is to get people's confidence up before investing in the bigger kits to grow more consistently i think that's the biggest it's not really a huge investment. No, it's thirty nine ninety nine. Thirty nine ninety nine for yeah. the yeah. big one. The, the that's our not our biggest one. Our biggest one is actually ten trays. So you get twenty trays of microgreens a month. Um, and that's forty nine ninety five. So and again the trays are reusable and you just replenish them. We do bundles. It's a new product coming out. It's coming out tomorrow actually. Um, it's a seasonal refill bundle. So you'll get enough seeds and coir to grow 36 or 60 trays over those three months. The trays are reusable. Yes. You just yep. put the yep. compost in. So you'll get new green. coir and new seeds. Um, and you'll be able to choose which seeds you want each season. And then you'll also get a microgreen mystery, which is something that I, I like creating products and giving people inspiration, the things that they may be, mm, I don't want to try that, but we choose something. Um, we will look at asking our community what they would like to see and which seeds and which plants they would like. And then we just, you know, offer that to them within the bundle each quarter. So it's just a subscription one? That will be, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, you can have it as a one-off and have it for those three months. And then, you know, the following quarter each with each season, really. So we'll have a sort of spring, summer, autumn, yeah. winter. So tell us a bit about some of the growing tricks. We talked about shells, talked about fake yeah. lights, everything. Just tell us a little bit more. Again, um, people, you know, if they don't have window ledges, they can do it on a shelf as long as you've got some, um, I'd say natural light, but actually, you know, you can grow these with a lamp. You know, at urban farms generally, my garage was previously set up with like LED lighting in there. Mm -hmm. So it was on a timer sort of you know, 13 hours off, 11 hours on. Um, so you can do it. You could do it in a basement as long as you've got some light. <laughs> um, but, yeah, shelves, any sort of space. Again, our tins are really little, um, so they will fit anywhere, really. And a normal British home yep. with all the temperature yep. changes will be fine. Yeah. If you have a heating heating going into it, like, I mean, sometimes yeah, you have central I mean, heating. I, right? Yeah, so I have got a sort of window ledge above a radiator. Um, and what I will make sure I just keep an eye on the coir, which, again, in our instructions and videos, I will show, I know, to tell people to just check it's not drying out too much. And okay. anything that you see the plants flopping that would be why there's not enough water. So all these little problems they may come across, you'll be able to find help, you know, what, why is this happening, what's going on. Um, uh, again, you will find in summer things are even quicker growing. We say seven to ten days, but certain things, of radish in particular, you might have that might be ready in six days through summer. Goodness. So um, it can affect, obviously, the speed of things growing, but you can grow it indoors all year round. 
that's really fascinating. Yeah. And uh, everything is organic, obviously, yes. because your compost is organic. It is. I'm certified under the Soil Association um, and DEFA regulated. Um, obviously, you can check that with companies, you know, if they've got the, the certification symbol on their kits, because, you know, there's other people that are doing this kind of thing out there. So even if you didn't want to buy the whole kit um, and you wanted to buy sort of the bundle with the growing media and the seeds, you could do it in your recycling. So you yeah. can grind some pots, you know, like tomato trays or you know, sort of nectarine the plastic punnets. Yeah. Know, they will work as well. So Exactly. Yeah. So you're all into using reusable yeah. things. Okay. Yeah. And just making do with what you can do, I suppose. And not feeling they've got you've got to make a huge investment um, initially. It's just giving it a go really. And I think little steps, you know, over a longer period of time you'll get these results instead of feeling like oh, I've got to do all of this at once. It's just doing a little bit at a time. Yeah, yeah. Don't try to replace your entire refrigerator no, all at once. No. You know, just try to do it like one little thing at exactly. a time. Exactly. It's like New Year habits, isn't it? And goals. We sort of set these massive goals and think we've got to do all this. But actually, instead of looking at getting rid of bad habits, it's creating new ones to replace them. So mm. we just say, right by watering and looking after something you're nurturing that each day and it just makes you more conscious of probably about doing the same for yourselves or what you're eating to go with that so you're much more conscious about actually what being healthier because you're growing something and you don't want to offset it by eating something that's not so healthy exactly but you know, a final point in the next segment, I'd like to talk to you about your business model and how mm. you market and how you nurture your community and how that is more sustainable for your your lifestyle as well. It's all about sustainability here, not just about eating healthy, mm. but also about learning from Alice about the business model she's chosen that's kept her very well balanced. So we'll be back with Alice Bowden after this. Across Bath, Westbury and Warminster, this is Radio Bath. Welcome back to Brave Business Conversation, the final segment with Alice Bowden. And uh, something that really um, resonated with me when you were talking about your business model, you know, is, well, how do you market this thing? And you said, well, it's not about just going out there and getting new clients all the time. It's about nurturing your existing community. Can you tell us more about what you do to grow your business? Yeah, so I've put, I've really been thinking over the last few months of how I want the business to work um, for me and my life and my kids' lives and how that then I can create a business around that really um, and have a community of like-minded people and community to grow together. So I do a lot of surveys. I ask my customers a lot of questions. I'm always asking for feedback. Um, whilst making products and finding out what they really want. And I think that's really important to have a long-term relationship with them as opposed to constantly getting new customers all the time. Yeah, yeah. And um, how does that change the way your business affects your life personally? Because I know you're a busy mom. Yeah. You're doing everything. What's the difference in between the old mindset of got to keep growing, getting new clients versus this one that's nurturing? Yeah, I, well, I, I, I burnt out um, earlier this year, really, you know, from all this. And I just found it, I get quite upset by it. I um, just felt like I had nothing left. Yeah, it's could, always yeah. the same, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? It's always the same because you've got... You've got responsibilities yeah. and everything, and I find the uh, one of the things that I realize moving to the UK as well is that, ooh, actually the way I run my business is my choice, mm. right? Yeah, um, yeah. I think that's it. I think um, it's sort of expectation and looking at what everyone else is doing, and you think it's got to run a certain way. And I've really learned that it can run the way you want it to run. And, and then and sort of really analyzing and looking at how that looks and what will make that work that way and being in the right group of people. So I'm really conscious of who I spend time with and other business sort of owners, um, not necessarily in the same market, but people that are similar situation and looking at how they're doing things and always talking and analyzing what can be done better for both customer and for me as a business owner. And that's why, you know, developing these sort of seasonal bundles is the way I'd like it to be. So 
you know, I'm always looking after those customers that I've already got and growing very slowly as opposed to putting huge demands on myself and also, you know, the our suppliers. You know, I use a lot of local British suppliers, but it's making sure that there's always stock available so I'm not running out of stock and panicking there and meeting demand. There's no pressure there, really. That's good. We yeah. were talking about yeah. seasons, wasn't it? Yeah. It's funny because like I had a season in my life where it was all about whatever success yeah. meant to me at that time. Busy, busy, busy. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Come home at 10, you know, then burn out the next day yeah. again. But I guess at that time, not that I, I don't regret it. It was the season in my life where I had yeah. to do that. But it doesn't mean you have to keep doing it no. over and over again. And it's all this, this show has been all about sustainability and yeah. also giving back what you take away from yourself. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's it. And it can change. And you don't have to stick to it. It's not this rigid, well, you've made that decision, stick to it. Just adapt as you go along, really. Yeah, and I like to make little segues and associations to things. Mm. But when you said... Um, you want you don't want that pressure to get results and everything it's actually funny because i think the less you do sometimes the more results you get yes it's almost like you know when people say well when you eat your greens very small you get 40 percent more nutrition mm -hmm. it's almost like if you actually focus on the stuff that works in your business like let's say for you it's building that community and arguably that's probably a better um, uh, way to grow a business yeah. than trying to recruit new clients yeah. and getting to know new people all the time um you actually get probably not i'm not sure if it's 40 percent more results but it's actually more results than trying yeah. to trying to be everything to everyone exactly i think it's that 80 20 rule if you sort of take a step back and look at on a business level where revenue is coming from you know which customers they're coming from and you'll sort of have a marketing budget you know, most businesses will have, it's putting sort of 50% of that marketing budget into your current customers as opposed to getting new all the time. Because um, obviously talking to your customers, um, finding out what they want and looking after them and giving them what they need does obviously take time and resources, but it will pay off in the end. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure Thank having you. you on the show. How do we get in touch with you or get access to your kits? How yeah, do we do so that? obviously website, www.teenygreenie.co.uk. Um, I've got a YouTube channel, um, just Teeny Greeny. Facebook, Teeny Greeny. Instagram, um, all my contact details are on there. Again, I've got, um, you can subscribe to our green side via that. Um, you will get asked a few questions. When you do join, just again, I just want to know who you know we're serving really, and mm -hmm. what we can you know help people with. Yeah, so she likes to personalize her I approach. Do, yeah. Did you say you also have a little hotline if you say, ah, I'm struggling? Yeah, I did. Yeah, we've got a <laughs> WhatsApp group, and we're gonna we're setting up. We've got a private Facebook group as well, and yeah, I am there. I reply, and people send me photos thinking they've killed things, but it's usually okay with a little bit of guidance oh, uh, back on track. Good. That's good. It's been a pleasure having you. Good thank luck you with for your having business. Me. And thank, thank you. you for bringing your kids in. They That's look right. absolutely delightful. Well, I'm going to leave one for you, and um, I want to yes. see the results. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that came with a bit of pressure, yeah. but all good. Thank I you. love my greens. <laughs> we'll be back with more Brave Business Conversations after the news hour. This is Radio Bar.